From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. I don't do too much praying about things, I just do it. I make things happen. And uh, somehow it all works out. Somehow I feel, I feel like the Lord was in it because uh, I feel like I'm directed, if you know what I mean by that. Um, but the statement that I've heard lately is, the storms that Satan created in your life are nothing compared to the storms you can create against him. My theory in life, after I learned how to fight physically, I was kind of a whipping post in high school. Probably have you heard this story before, but my uncle set me on a stump one day and he told me how to fight. And from that point, I was a pretty good sized kid in junior high and all the juniors and seniors would pick on me and beat on me. And I was, like I said, I was a whipping post. And so my uncle, I come, my uncle come out, he was from Chicago and he set me down on a stump and I'll never forget the stump sitting out in front of the yard. And, and he said, this is how you prepare yourself for battle. And I would sit there, I sat there and listened to him. And after about three or four more whippings, one day I remembered what he had told me. And so the storm that came against me was nothing like the storm that they got back from me, if you know what I mean. And so we are living in a day today where we are having, I mean, it just, uh, my daughter called me up one day and she says, Dad, I just get through one thing and then I'm into another. And I can't get through the second thing that it's already half, the third one's already halfway starting through the second thing. And, it, and she says it just is going on and on and on. And I said, well, she says, can you give me any advice? And I said, yeah, you need to go to church. <laughs> you need to get yourself right with Christ. You need to find a church. Because I said, these storms ain't going to stop. Now, my theory in life was, if you started it, I was going to finish it. And so uh, I carried that through my, li my life. And so when my daughter got older, uh, they were, she was going to a school that was 50% black. And so she come to me one day and she says, Dad, I'm really going through some rough things. And it was, she lived in Des Moines and it was a bad neighborhood, a bad area. And she says, I don't know how to deal with it. So I told her one day, I said, if you ever start a fight, I will spank you so hard. I will come down on you so hard that you wish you never even thought about being born. But I said, if someone starts it, you finish it and make sure that it's done right. So about two or three months later, I get this phone call. I'm at work and uh, <coughs> This principal from her school calls me up and says, I got your daughter sitting here in the, in the office. And I said, so what's going on? And he proceeded to tell me. And I, so I said, well, put my daughter on. And I said, so who started it? She says, she did. So I said, did you finish it? And she says, oh, yeah, I finished it, Dad. <laughs> I finished it really good. I said, so tell me what happened. And so she told me what happened right in front of the principal. And so I said, give me back to the principal. And I got the phone to the principal. And I said, now, is that what the story is? And he says, yeah, that's pretty much the whole. And I said, so what are you proposing? He says, I will, uh, I'm planning on suspending both of the girls for three days. And I said, no, well, here's the deal. 
He can suspend the first girl, but I said, if you suspend my daughter, I said, I'll come down and finish it. Because I said, I'm not going, you're not going to take and, you see, if the devil's going to come at you, let's get this figured out. If the devil's going to come at you like a storm, which he does, I think we only have a right to have a bigger storm. I think we have a right to conjure up a storm like he ain't never. Listen, you've heard this statement a hundred times. I know you have. The devil comes and reminds you what you did in the past, but you need to remind him what's going to happen to him in the future. The devil's going to come and bring on some storms, but it's time that you brought on your own storm. We need to come to a point in our mind where we look Satan in the eye and we say, you think you're bad. You think you're tough. You ain't seen nothing yet. And some people would say, no, nah, you just can't say that. Well, why can't I say that? If, if I'm a born-again Christian and I have the Holy Spirit working through me and I love God with all my heart, do not tell me that you can't read in the Old Testament hundreds of areas where the prophets or the leaders in the Bible whipped their enemies. Amen. That's right. Tell me, just show me a place where they, they didn't whip their own their enemies. Right. So when Satan came and brought, let's just take one off the top of my head. Let's just take Moses. So he's got the people free. We won't even go into all the other things that, that the Lord tried to t explain. You know, Moses tried to explain to what's going to happen to it. We won't even go in that. We'll just go into detail of where Moses has his people free. They're at the, ri they're at the li river, and they're trying to get across, and they've got the, the P Egypt coming at them. And, uh, and here's the normal thing of Christians. What are we going to do? We should have stayed there. We should have continued being a slave. We should have continued letting Egypt beat us. We should have continued. We'd have been better off. How could you do this to us, Moses? How could you take and bring us this false prophecy? How could you even tell us that there was another place that we could go to that could be our land? How could you? What are you doing? Now, this is a pretty good-sized storm. And you can say, well, Pharaoh's the one. No, the Satan's the one that conjured this all up. Let's face it. So there's a storm coming. And it's coming up on them quick. So what did Moses do? He did exactly what he was commanded to do. Stood over there at the water, striked it, and split open. And he says, get going. Now, they're going across. And, and it is not enough that he gives, God gives them an escape route. He takes and he creates a storm. They thought, they, Satan thought he had a storm. He didn't see nothing until Israel got across. And then Moses just said, close her up. Think about that. Was that not a bigger storm? You see, God, God can create a bigger storm than the storm that's coming at you. And then you've got, listen, I think it's kind of funny because every once, you know, we have these problems. Lord, we have these problems. We have these things where people come and they remind us. I had some people remind me a couple of months ago some of the stupidity that I did. Some of the things I did in my life. And you know, I took stuck my head in the sand and said, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not fit. I'm not, I mean, and this is, this is, it's not just a couple, this goes on for years. You'll be, if you're in the ministry, they'll, somebody will come along and tell you about a mistake that you made. 
and they will rub it in. Just they'll just just it's like a handful of salt and throw it right in and just grind it right in there. <laughs> Ministry is the hardest place in the world to work in. Right. Because everybody wants to crucify you. <laughs> Satan wants to remind you of some of the things that you made mistakes on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I remember them all. I don't need him to tell me. I remember a lot of my mistakes. I remember some mistakes in my ministry. I remember some mistakes I made in the church. I seen that I lost in places. I got in trouble in some areas. And Satan still to this day, I don't even have a church and to this day. I think about getting it, building another church and he reminds me of those things and I have to sit back and you know, it really gets on. Listen, as Christians, Satan loves to remind us of the things that we have done. He loves to conjure up a storm. You know, he always loves to conjure up a storm. And you're sitting there and you fret and you stew and you cry and you bawl and you kick and you thrash and you act like a child. Let's face it. And then all of a sudden, you realize that that was in me is greater than that that is out there. Amen. That that is within me is greater than that that is out there. So that storm that's coming at me, that just means that's just my opportunity to create a bigger one. That's my opportunity to show just how strong I can be. You see, Moses took and he, he they, they really tried to play some games with Moses. So they take and they got their little soothsayers and witchcraft and all this. And they throw some things out and, you know, and they turn into snakes. And Moses takes his staff and throws it down. And what happens? He became, becomes a bigger snake, and he eats the other snakes. And then let's, let's just take this one step further. You don't never pick up a snake by the tail. You always pick it up by the head. Because if you pick it up by the tail, it can come back and bite you. And see, as Christians, we need to come head on with the problem. If we come around this side or come around that side or think we can come around in the back or whatever, it's not going to work. You have to confront Satan face to face. So if you pick up a snake by the tail, it has this tendency to curl back around and it'll strike. But if you pick it up by the head, you have control of the situation. But just so that Pharaoh understood who God was and that Moses was there led by God, and Pharaoh knew this is what you do. You pick up by the head, not by the tail. Moses went ahead and he just picked up the snake by the tail and turned back into the staff. You see, God can create a bigger storm than what Satan does. We have, uh, I'm going to read a little scripture here about a storm. It's in Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35. It says, That day when the evening came, he said to the disciples, Let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, and just as it, just as it was in the boat, there was also other boats with him. A furious gull came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. That's a pretty bad storm. The waves were so high and I've watched a couple of movies and, 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 and watched a couple of these rescue things, you know, of, 
of uh, the Coast Guard going out and if there's a really bad storm and you have waves coming over the boat, that's a bad situation. You might as well just say your prayers and let that be it. But it says, it nearly swamped the boat. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now there's a lot of Christians out there today that says, Don't you care if I die? Aren't you worried about me? And in all actuality, I don't really care anymore. Because if I do, absence from the body is presence with the Lord. I'll be in a far better place. And if you try to conjure me up and re-pray me back to life again, I'm going to be really mad because I know where I'm going. I'm on my way, baby. I'm heading for home. And if you pray me back to life again, or I wake up, you're going to have a fight with me because I was on my way. Anyhow, he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. Quiet, be still. When the wind died down and it was completely calm, he said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you not have faith? Do you not have faith? And this is where we're at today. We have these storms. We have these, we have, and you'll say, well, what are you talking about storms? Well, we have financial problems. We have mental problems. We have family problems. We have, so, we, I could go on, we have car problems. We have dog problems. We have all different kinds of problems in our life. And we look at them and we just say, God, are you going to just let me sit here and die? Are you just going to let me? And you will not, for the life of you, figure out that you have enough faith to conjure up a storm yeah. that could wipe out everything yeah. that's coming at you. Yes. And you've got a right to remind him what his future is going to be. Because I know he's going to remind you. Listen, I've had people in revivals in my church. I've even had people in this church look me in the eye and say, I'm not worthy to work on the platform. I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not worthy to do that. And the reason why they say that is because they'll look in the eye 10 minutes later and say, I did this when I, I did that, and I've been here, and I've been there, and, and the devil has just reminded you of everything that you've done. And you haven't remembered that when he died on the cross, he paid a debt. He paid the debt. He took care of the, he took care of the problem. So what's the problem? He took care of the problem. He paid a debt that you could not pay. He got tired of people in the Old Testament doing blood sacrifices with animals. It wasn't pure enough. And then he sent his only begotten son that he should die on the cross and pay a debt it could not have been paid by anybody else or any animal or any, any whatever you want to call it, cult, whatever. There's nothing that could pay the debt that Jesus Christ didn't pay for. Not if you've accepted him as your savior. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you've accepted him as your savior and you have him dwelling within you, do you not believe you can conjure up a bigger storm than the storm that's coming at you? Amen. Yep. I, have, I, I, I have a situation 
I'm dealing with right now with a person. I won't bring it up or any names or anything because it just is, I just won't do it. And the plain simple fact is, is every time I turn around, they keep having another situation. Well, you know, I can't make my payments. I can't make my car payment. I can't, I'm going to lose my house. Now they've turned off my water. I can't seem to get a break. Everything is falling down. And I said, there's only one thing left. And that's to go back to Jesus. Well, I was in the same mess when I was with Jesus. I was like, no. You're in this mess because you're against Jesus. You're in this mess because you don't trust him. You don't have any faith in him. You're in this situation because you think you know it all. And believe you me, if you counsel with me, I will look you in the eye and tell you. My wife's shaking her head, yeah. I will tell you exactly straight up what the situation is. If the Lord tells me that I got a right to, I, not a right, actually it's my duty to tell you. You need Jesus. You need to do this. And I've had people, I, I had one couple, boy, they were so mad at me. <clears throat> they were mad at me. I told them exactly what was going on. And they walked right out of my church. Down the road they went. Went to another church that would accept them for the situation they were in and pat them on the back and this, that, and you. And the next thing, about two years later, they came back and they said, we've got to apologize to you because you were right. We went and found a different church because I'd closed my church down. We went and found a different church and we got ourselves straightened out because the pastor told us the same thing that you told us. You see, you can create a bigger storm than Satan. You can be bigger than him. He got out of the bow, out of the bottom of the boat, got off the couch that he was sleeping on, and got up there on the top of the deck, and he looked at the storm, and he just said, quiet down, cool it. You don't think you don't have a right to do the same and then, and plus he even told them they had the right. Because he said, where is your faith at? What happened? Are you have, do you have a lack of faith? Teresa and I, we get in situations. Oh, Lord, we get in situations. And the bull comes out of me. And I... I I look them right square in the eye and I say, who do you think you're messing with? <laughs> you know, you can only, I, I can only put up with so much. Yeah. And in my mind, I just say, who do you think you're messing with? And Teresa and I, will get on our hands and knees or we'll stand there in, in agreement and we will pray and the house of the, will come down you know, and we we've we're doing things right now that I only I I wouldn't even dreamed I could have done. And Satan keeps throwing more crap. Oh, yeah. He keeps reminding me. And Teresa and I, we've been reminding each other. This is where we were, this is where we're at, and this is what we're trying to get thrown back into. And we're fighting a battle. And everybody says, oh, your life is so grand. You've got it so made. Because you've got a wife that believes in Christ and you believe in God and, and on and on and on. And you're so great and wonderful. And oh, we look up to you and all that. Well, pff, you don't understand some of the storms that we've went through. And you know, a lot of our storms has been our friends and family. You see, Satan don't play fair. He uses the people that you love the most to destroy you the most. And a lot of times, 
I'll give you one for instance. I look my son, my one son, and I look him in the eye and I say, oh, wait a minute here now. Since when did you become holier than thou? <laughs> Don't I? Since when do you seem to think that you can tell the old man more about the word of God than I can? So I have to, once in a while, nail him to the cross. <laughs> and you know what? The funny part of it is he gets down every time. But you know, here's the, great, here's the thing about it. He has enough of God in him and enough of, of spiritual in him that when I knock him down, and I tell him which way the butter is going to be spread on the but on the bread. About four to twenty-four hours later, he comes into the house. Is this not true? He comes into the house, puts his arms around me, with tears in his eyes, and he says, "Forgive me, Dad." Whether he's right or wrong. He comes and he apologizes to his dad. I'm just trying to tell you, you think that you have big storms coming in your way. You ain't got nothing. You got a storm that you can create. I mean, you can, you can conjure up a storm. I can't remember who it was. The guy that, stu that stood there and he said, and he says, I'll fix you. And he stood before his enemy, and the enemy looked up, and he had 10,000 angels behind him. He didn't even have to do anything. I, I brought my crew with me, you know, as they say in the hood. I brought my crew with me. You can bring your crew with you. God will allow you to bring a crew. God will allow you to swallow up the snakes that's attacking you. You see what I'm saying? It's what is in your heart and how you feel and how your faith is. So let's wake up, folks. You got something bigger within you. Christ flat out told those disciples, what is the matter with you? Where is your faith? So I'm going to come back at you, and I'm going to ask you as Christians, where is your faith? I'm not going to be there to help you all the time. Some days you're going to have to stand up before Satan and remind him of his future and remind him that you've got a bigger storm coming than him. And that's all there is to it. Because greater there is in you than he that is in the world. Right. Don't forget that. Right. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's just that simple. Sick him. You can always conjure up something bigger through Christ. Because he's on your side. That's right. Remember, he's on your side. Unless you turn your back and walk away, but he's always on your side. Amen. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at TV at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.